This episode is brought to you by the Let's Code Physics Patreon supporters. So one thing you can do in vPython that I don't think a lot of people are aware of is you can read in files from your computer. So like if you've got a data file that you want to use to graph or animate uh, in vPython, you can use this function read local file to read in uh, a file from your computer. And uh, if you give it this argument scene.title anchor, uh, you get to choose the file at the time that you run the program, which is pretty nice because then you don't have to change this every time you generate a new data file. You can just run it and then select the file. The way I want to do this today is to show you how we can import a data file from the tracker uh, motion tracking software into vPython. So uh, if you've watched this channel, probably at all, you know I'm a big fan of vPython, I'm a big fan of Tracker. So this is this code that I'm gonna show you today is a way of getting those two systems to talk to each other. So this video is gonna be about getting data from Tracker into vPython. In another video, I'm gonna show you how to get data from vPython into Tracker. So if we're gonna get data from Tracker into vPython, then we need to start in Tracker. So here I've got a simple experiment set up. I've got a mass on a spring, it's oscillating up and down. This is one I used in one of my Tracker for Beginners tutorials. And you can see we're doing a pretty good job of tracking the, uh, the mass on the spring here going up and down. We get a very nice sinusoidal oscillation here for our mass. Piper, uh, named after one of our Patreon supporters. So the, the way Tracker keeps track of all this stuff is it's storing, for each one of these points, it's storing three values, right? It's storing a time value, an X value, and a Y value. And it's storing that in a table here. And that's the information that I need to get from Tracker into vPython. Let me show you how to do that. So once you've done your tracker analysis. Once you've got your motion tracked, you've got your data shown up here, you've got your your, your, your data markers in here. If you haven't done that yet, uh, do check out Tracker for Beginners. I'll include a link to that in the description below. But once you've got all that information and you're ready to get this data into vPython, go to File, come on down to Export, and here you can export a data file. So you're going to click on File, Export, then Data File. Uh, it will have, it popped up on another monitor, excuse me. Um, it will have a few options for you. It'll ask you which table you want to pull from. I currently only have one table and that's Piper. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to ask you what cells you want to include. You want that to be all cells, um, unless you only want a selection. But currently I have a single cell selected, so I don't think we want that. Um, so all cells is fine. Uh, number format, I haven't played around with this too much. Uh, full precision is fine. I, I think as formatted should be fine, but full precision is fine. Then we come to the really important part. This is the delimiter. Delimiter means what character are you using to tell one number apart from the other? Because when you store information in a table, you've got to be able to tell the computer where the numbers are separated. You've got to be able to tell it, how do I know what's the T, what's the X, and what's the Y? Because the computer doesn't automatically know what one number, where one number ends and the next number begins. Uh, there's several options you can use for that. I've got this code set up to be delimited by commas. Um, I'll show you how to change that in a little bit if you want to, uh, but for right now, we'll just go with comma. I need to just click on save as, and we're gonna call this one spring underscore data dot text. So just give it a name in a folder that you can find easily. One of the issues I've learned that students in the 21st century have is being able to find data files on their computer. They, they don't really uh, seem to know where all those folders go. So just find a folder that's easy to find. Desktop is usually easiest, uh, but then it gets cluttered. Documents is also fine. Um, or in my case, we're going to go with the tracker for beginners file. Just give it a name you can remember in a folder that you can find and we'll click on save. Okay. So now let me show you what this uh, document looks like. I'm going to open up my notepad here. And we're going to say file, open. This isn't really necessary, but we're going to take a look at it. Uh, let's go up and let's go to tracker for beginners, springdata.txt. So this is the 
data that I just wrote out. The first two lines I'm not really interested in. This is, uh, these are labels so that I know what it is uh, that I've got in this file, which Tracker is kind enough to provide for me. That is helpful for me to read, but we need vPython to ignore those two lines. We're gonna talk about how to do that in just a minute. And then I've got, you notice I've got this block of numbers and it's kind of difficult for us to read as humans because it's just digits, comma, digits, comma, digits, etc. right? This is not really for humans to read. This is for the computer to read. But you notice that in each line, I've got three numbers. Like here, I've got zero, negative 1.27, uh, 2.29 uh, times 10 to the minus 1 times 10 to the minus 1 and I've got them separated by commas. Notice I've got the little e negative 1 there that just means times 10 to the negative 1. That's how computers read scientific notation. Right? So you notice these are separated by commas. So in each line I've got three line, I've got three numbers separated by commas. Okay? That's what we're going to be reading into the vPython program. So this data file was created by Tracker now we're gonna get that into vPython. So let's take a look at our GlowScript code. The first thing I do here is define a function. This is gonna be read tracker, meaning I'm reading data in from tracker. So I've got a little comment here. This function prompts for a data file in the format t, x, y, and stores the file's information in three lists. Basically, I wanna be able to peel off the t values the X values and the Y values. I want to be able to peel those off into three different lists. I want this column to become a list, this column to become a list, and this column to become a list. I'm going to call those lists T list, X list, and Y list, meaning T values in a list, X values in a list, Y values in a list. You can name things anything in vPython, so you might as well name them things that make sense. Okay, what we're now in order to do that, what I have to do is use this read local file function. And it's gonna take in file, and it's basically gonna store all the information about this file in this variable in file, meaning input file. So this is kind of a, an esoteric variable. It, it represents reading in the file itself. What I need to do is begin to pull off the items in this file line by line. I can't really read it column by column. I can only go line by line. So here's how we're gonna do that. We're gonna create a temporary array called lines, and we're gonna ask it, to go down this file, right? So here's infile.txt, meaning the text of the input file, and we want to split that up into lines. So what the split function does is it takes a string of characters and it splits them based on some delimiter here. Now we've already used that word delimiter. Here I've got a delimiter of slash n, which means new line. This is the special character, meaning look for a new line. What I'm doing here is, is I'm saying, you have, GlowScript has read in this entire file as one string. If you ask it to print in file.txt, it's gonna print every item of text in this file. It's taking the entire contents of this file in as one really, really, really long string. That's not really useful to me. I need to split it up line by line. In order to split it up line by line, I'm gonna use the split function with the new line character as my delimiter. So whatever character you put in here is going to become the delimiter. It's going to be used as the delimiter. In other words, it's going to say treat everything as one block of text, as one string until you get to the delimiter. So for example, it's going to read Piper here. It's going to say, oop, there's a new line. I continue down to the next one. Oop, there's a new line. I read the next piece. Oops, there's a new line. I read the next piece. Oops, there's a new line. That's what this is doing in the split is it's creating a list of strings that are the contents of this file separated line by line. So that's the first step is to carve this thing up line by line. So in this list called lines, there's gonna be the lines from the text file. So then here we need to go over those lines and we need to get each number out of the line. So for example, let's say I'm on the one, two, three, fourth one here, excuse me, zero, first, second, third one here. Still getting used to starting counting by starting counting at zero. Um, what it's going to do now is it's going to look for, so it's, it's going to look to split up this text by commas because here I've got line dot split with a comma inside. So I'm looking along here. I'm looking along here. I get to a comma. So I know that this needs to be everything from this first three to this e negative two. I now know that that needs to be my first uh, string, my first item in the list. Then I keep looking, keep looking, till I get to a comma. Okay, that needs to be my next item in the list. Keep looking, keep looking, till I get to the end of the list, because remember, there's no more after that. 
in this line item here. And so it's going to read in this as the last piece. So I'm going to have a string with 0, 1, 2 entries. Well, here I've got 0, 1, 2. So I'm going to call this another temporary list. we got a lot of temporary lists going on. TXY, meaning its first, excuse me, its zeroth entry is T, its next entry is X, its last entry is Y. And so what we're going to do, we're going to read in to T list, X list, and Y list each of these things. Now, remember, this is a list of strings. I need these to be numbers, right? Strings are wonderful. You can put anything in a string, but I need to convert those into numbers. That's why we're using float. So we're saying look for the zeroth item in TXY, convert it to a float, and then append it to T list. And then similar thing down here, look for the first entry in TXY, convert it to a float, and append it to X list. And then similar thing down here, look for the second entry in TXY, convert it to a float, append it to Y list. And we're going to keep repeating that for every line that was in the original data file. Now remember, it's going to run into a problem when it tries to read these first two lines, right? I don't want my program crashing on the first two lines of the text that it reads. So that's what this try command is for. What try means is you're telling v is you're telling Python, I want you to execute these lines of code, but there might be a problem with them. <laughs> Meaning I, the program writer, might have made a mistake. I know I've made a mistake. I pass, I'm trying to pass letters as numbers, right? That doesn't work. I'm saying try this. If you get an exception, if you get an error, or an exception, exception is the nice way of saying error, then do this instead. Don't do this if there's an error, do this, All right? Now, I don't really care what happens if there's an error, right? I really just wanted to ignore these. So I've just put in a dummy line here that does really nothing. I'm not really using A for anything. I'm bringing up A just to, uh, just to kind of pass the time there. Let's hope A doesn't get angry in some weird Black Mirror episode or something. Um, but we're going to keep doing that over and over again, filling out these lists, TLX, X list, and Y list. And thanks to this try piece here, these lists are only going to contain numbers. And then we're going to return T list, X list, and Y list. This is something I recently learned that you can do. You can return multiple things from a function. They don't even have to be in a list together. You can just return three items. And so the way we're going to use this, so this is just as a function. So you can use this function as many times as you need to. You can read in as many uh, tracker data files as you need to. Here, what we're going to do is use this function. So we're going to say read underscore tracker. And we're going to set the results equal to T list, X list, and Y list. Another thing I learned you can do, you can do multiple variable assignments in one line. If you just say first thing, comma, second thing, comma, third thing, excuse me, zero thing, comma, first thing, comma, second thing. So I'm returning those items here, and then I'm setting them equal to these items here. Now I'm using the same names, that's probably sloppy. I should probably change those to something else, it doesn't really matter. But um, if you had multiple files being read, and like let's say I'm tracking multiple things, so let's suppose I go back here, and let's suppose I had two strings going on, All right, Piper and other Piper. I could export two data files, one for Piper and one for other Piper. And then when I come over here, I could have read tracker twice and I could have, you know, Piper T list, Piper X list, Piper Y list, and other Piper T list, other Piper X list, other Piper Y list. I would just do that on a separate line. And that's why I've defined read tracker as a separate function so that I can read as many data files in as I need to. So I can uh, call function again to read in more data files, you know, and you could just put that in here on line 27. And you say, okay, that's wonderful. I've got my data in now. Now let's do something with it. Now let's create an animation based on it. So here, I'm going to call my thing in the animation tracker marker because it's going to follow along with tracker. I'm going to make it a box. And the box's position is going to be determined by X list and Y list. Um, tracker is limited to two dimensions, so our Z is going to be zero for all of these. Um, but I'm going to start it out with X list zero and Y list zero. And then basically what I do is create an animation loop here where I've got 4i in range 0 to length of t list. So I'm looping over all of the items in t list, x list, and y list. And I'm saying in each frame, I want you to update time as t list of i. This is a little different than how we update time. Usually we say time equals time plus dt, right? In this case, our time values are given to us by the data file. 
Fortunately, they are evenly spaced. Looks like they're evenly spaced by about a third of a second. It's a little bit less than a third, it looks like. What I'm gonna do in each frame is just update tracker marker dot pause as X list of I, Y list of I, and zero, All right? Because I don't need to animate it. I don't have, I mean, excuse me. I don't need to use Euler Chromer for this. I've already got the X list and the Y list determined. And so when I press control two, my first step is to choose a file and we'll go up to my spring data. Pro tip, uh, if you've got a busy folder like this one, just sort by date modified and look for the last, uh, the last one that you modified. That's probably the one you were working with. We'll press open. And here I've got my box animating according to what happened in Tracker, right? So let's see if I can get these to run concurrently just to show you that they're doing the same thing. All right, we're gonna refresh this page. And we'll click choose file, I'll click on spring data, quickly alt tab over and play. You can see they're following each other, right? Because this thing is following the same data points that this thing has generated. Now this one's moving a little bit slower uh, just because I have the rate set differently, right? So you can't really compare the speed of an animation with the speed of the video here because this one has a different frame rate than this one does. So that's something I could do would be to look at this animation and this thing side by side to make sure that they match. I could also use this to create graphs. I mean, I've already got graphs and tracker, but really what's powerful about this thing is now what I can do is compare this with a model, right? So if I come over here, right, I've got a, uh, let's see, I've got a period of about, I've got, I'm going from 0.6 to 1.4, it looks like. So let's try 1.4 minus 0.6, gives me a 0 0.8. So what I could do would be to set up an animation over here, period equals 0 0.8. And now what I can do is I can do animation marker, make a new box, and I'll go control copy, control paste. And let's see, let's give this thing, uh, let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have it start out in the same location. That's fine. Uh, actually not the same location. Let's move it over by, um, let's say half a unit. And then what I'll do is I'll animate this thing. So I'll say animation underscore marker dot pause dot y. I'm not really interested in moving the x, I'm really more interested in moving the y. Equals, uh, let's do this. Uh, let's call it, let's see, this thing is doing a pretty good job following a sine pattern. So we'll have sine of two times pi times time divided by the period. And again, this time value is being updated each go round of the loop, thanks to this list item here. And now sine oscillates around zero. I want this thing to oscillate around y list of zero. So I'll shift that up that way. And let's give this one a different color. Color equals color dot green. There we go. And we'll press control two. And we'll choose our file. Spring data dot text. Oh, oh, right, right, right. I have to give it an amplitude. Oops, oops, I have to give it an amplitude. I know I was missing something. All right, this thing's going from a bottom of 0.19 up to a top of 0.27. Let's go to our calculator. So we want 0.27 minus 0.19 divided by two. It's got an amplitude of 0.04. Go, that ought to fix that. Zero point, uh, amplitude times that. Amplitude, 0 0.04 it was, 0 0.04. Make sure that makes sense on here. I'm going from 0 0.23 up to 0 0.27. Yeah, 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 0 0.04, there we go. All right, take two. Choose our file. So the white one is gonna be animated based on spring data. The green one's gonna be animated based on our sign model. And you can see they match each other pretty well, right? The only thing this is based on is the period that I got from here and the amplitude. 
And what I'm able to get from that is two animations, one from the video, one from a theoretical model. So, so this is literally a side-by-side -side comparison of experiment and theory. And I can see in one window that they match up pretty well. So anyway, I hope that's useful to you. I think there's a lot of potential for this in physics classes to be able to directly compare experiment with theory. So I hope that's helpful to you. Hope you enjoy playing around with that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.